This episode in The Artist in Paris Diaries is sponsored by me, my book, I Love Being Sensitive, a workbook for artists and empaths on the road to higher creativity is out now. I will link that down below as well as I recently released the third journal in my affirmation journal series for 2023, the I Know Where I Belong journal. Every journal in the affirmation series is completely designed by myself with an original painting of mine on the cover. My hopes of this collection is to inspire and encourage you along your journey. So if you are looking for an inspiring journal for the fall, I will link that down below. Thank you so much for your support, for supporting my art, and let's get into this video. In the last episode, I was working on restoring my Paris apartment and old Haussmannienne in the 13th arrondissement. And I feel like I'm finally getting to the fun parts, for example, painting the walls and really just working on the finishing touches. I have really learned a lot about patience in this process and a part of that for me is finding ways of making the journey really fun for example taking dance breaks and inviting my friends over and just really trying to play fun games with myself because when you're renovating an old Parisian apartment I really just feel like you have to have so much patience I've also been learning a lot around how I deal with stress and <laughs> unexpected obstacles and I think that something that is a bit hard I think is really wanting to trust and know that things are going to work out but at the same time being human and in the moment feeling stressed and having to really focus to detach yourself from these outcomes and instead focus on how you can remain calm because for me that is the end goal is to always stay calm even though it's something that I do definitely struggle with. Very exciting day for a few reasons. First of all, I brought my, my tree sculpture, which is behind me in my apartment, and it looks so cool. It's been tucked away for a while, because I never lived in an apartment that was big enough to bring it into. And it was down in the cab, and I was like, let's just test it and see how it looks. And it's gotten a bit rusty, so I need to work on um, sanding it a bit today. So that's what I'm gonna be doing, as well as I'm finally starting to paint the crown molding. Let me show you guys. So as you can see, I got started a little bit and the technique I'm using is I'm using a round brush and trying to get as little paint as possible on the brush and sort of like dusting it as if you were cover, like, you know, uncovering a fossil or something because that way you keep, you keep the details. And I'm using satin paint which is I did some research and that's the best option because it really makes them sort of ressort du mur. It's so cruel. Why the mind can do So
I genuinely almost got electrocuted. So I got my electricity replaced and God, I'm fucking upset about this because now I have to call somebody else out. So I got my electricity replaced. They drilled into my walls. I've been working for two days now trying to just like repair that so I can start painting. And there were a few wires exposed from my old electricity, which I thought was dead. I see the wire exposed, so I just tuck it into the wall and I go to put um, some stuff over it. And it explodes. I'm talking like a fucking fire ball explodes out of my wall. And I'm just like, oh my god, shocked. First thing I think is like, all my electricity is ruined now. I just had that feeling of like, because I heard the breaker go down and I'm like, it just ruined all my electricity. I didn't even think about myself, about... <laughs> so I have two wires that I know of are exposed. This is super dangerous. And I need to call the, electri the, the guy who came in and did my electricity, but I just know it's gonna cost more money. It's like... But it's not worth it, you know, to be electric. Like, I literally could have died if I was touching it. I was putting on like the paste and then it exploded. So I wasn't exactly exploded when, when I had put the paste on it, so my fingers weren't on it. And I'm just like, you know when you've done a lot and you've worked on something a lot and you think you're finally getting to, getting to a place where you're like, okay, now I see like sort of the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's just like there's so many things like the leak in my ceiling, they're supposed to come fix it, but I haven't like heard back from them. My place is like a fucking mess because I'm just doing all this work and then now it's like this electricity thing and I'm like trying to stay positive. It doesn't seem like it, but I am. I'll show you guys. So this is what it looked like. It was out more and then it, I'm trying to like repair my wall right now, as you can see. And then it just fucking exploded and melted into the wall. And I would just say, let's just keep the circuit off, but the circuit controls all the other new plugs I just put in. I'm gonna have to put all this on hold at least until tomorrow because I have a Patreon meetup. We're gonna go watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is cool because I actually used to play Janet in the show here in Paris a long time ago. Um, but yeah, like first thing tomorrow, I need to call an electrician to come out again. And yeah, I'm just like, when he was putting in the electricity, did he not check to see like if this wire was live? Like he must have known, because he was the one that cut it. I don't know. Anyway, I'll keep you guys updated. I'm just a sweet so that evening I had called the people who I did my electricity and explained to them that they left live wires in my wall and that I was almost electrocuted and of course they didn't apologize they just kind of gaslit me but I insisted that they come back and they said fine we'll come by at 10 a.m. tomorrow so I woke up at 7 a.m. and this is what happened this day Everything is great. Everything is great. I'm so mad. Yesterday I called about like this issue with the electricity and they're like, yeah, someone's gonna come by between 10 and 11. I arrive here, I wake up super fucking early to get here, and I call them and they're like, oh yeah, like, the guy that told you that yesterday doesn't know anything, so we can't come by today. And I'm like, j'ai fait un petit câble, j'explique, re-explique la situation, and the guy's like, oh, it's no big deal. Like, so fucking sick of this shit. Like, just take responsibility and, like, do good work. And every time, like, I think it just comes back as well. Like, being a girl, like, people do not take me seriously. And I have to just become a fucking bitch. And it takes a lot out of me. Like, I tried the nice route. When the electrician was here, I was, like, bringing him cakes. <laughs> because he said, like, oh, it's my 25th anniversary of being here. So I, like, brought him cakes. I, like, brought so many like different presents all the time and then afterwards they become too comfortable and they do a shitty job 
what makes me really fucking mad is I already paid them. It was really expensive. So it's not even like, it's not even like I could be like, you guys need to fix this or else I'm not gonna pay you because, you know, Like people being like, yeah, I'll be there at 10 a.m. And then I wake up so fucking early and I get there and they're like, oh, someone told you that? Oh, we're not coming. They never showed up. I waited there all day since I was up since 8 a.m. and they just never showed up. So, yeah. I think that now is the time to pass to the written word, meaning email. Because one thing that people in France are afraid of is email, because it's a trace. You know, you do things by phone. Who's to say if they happened or not? Who's to say that conversation happened or not? Well, you write a, like a, an intense email and shit gets done, you know? So, I took photos, I'm gonna write them an email. I'll fucking sue them. I will sue them. <laughs> That's such an American thing to say. Suing isn't really a thing in France but I'll make it a thing if I have to. It's just like, I don't know. Like the least you could do is on the phone when I explain what happened is be like, oh, I'm so sorry, madame. But no, c'est toujours, ah, c'est pas, pas notre faute, hein? C'est pas notre faute. Like, it's not that big of a deal. If you would have said to me, oh my God, I'm so sorry, we made that mistake that happens sometimes that we overlook. No, none of that. I'm bothering them. So, I don't know. I'm still like positive. It's like, it's not like a fire is gonna start in my wall. It's just when you touch it, there could be, you could be electrocuted, <laughs> just that. <laughs> but it's, it's just the principle. Like most things that I get mad about, it's the principle, it's the principle of having a rendezvous and then not showing up. It's the principle of not being respectful, you know? Mm. I'll keep you guys updated. My friend has been super helpful and that he has been sending me like things I should say in the message to them that are right and yeah. It definitely helps to have a French person just like overlook my shit I'll keep you guys updated so a few weeks passed and I finally got someone from the company to come by again I almost lost hope because they kept ignoring my emails or just didn't show up when they said they would and I felt like I was just wasting so much time I even tried to hire a new company at some point because I was so frustrated and I just wanted it to be finished. But as I had hired and paid this company to redo all of my electricity, they were liable to fix any issues that they had done and no other electrical company wanted to pick up where they left off because they would be liable at that point. So I just sort of felt like I was in a bad position. I felt kind of helpless, like these people are not taking me seriously. But I guess what I learned through this is there's always going to be obstacles like this in life, unexpected things that pop up, but you have the responsibility of sort of keeping your cool and remaining calm because nothing is worth your sanity and peace of mind. Update on the electricity is that the guy came and he neutralized one of the cables, the one that I almost got electrocuted. And then I was like, can you look and see if there's others, you know? So he did and we found one 
and he just put he just put wall filler over it. He didn't neutralize it. He didn't put a cap on it. And at this point, I'm like, this guy is so not serious. I was telling him my concerns. I'm like, that can start a fire in the wall, and he just yeah. So now I still have this live wire in my wall. And so I'm keeping the electricity off. I might have to call somebody else, pay someone else to fix it. Because I was like, can we just cut that wire? But apparently it's connected to the electricity in the kitchen. So it's like a whole thing. Uh, but yeah, today I'm just painting. I So the idea of the base était que je vais um, peint um, le salon en jaune. Um, but I sort of have, started to have second thoughts about it because I'm like, I'm gonna use this as my art studio and I think that yellow, unfortunately, as beautiful and like as happy as it would make me, I think that it could influence my painting because the light would be like very yellow. Um, so I think I'm just gonna paint everything white and then later down the line if I decide to, maybe I will paint it yellow. But yeah, it's taking a long time to paint everything. I didn't realize how much work it was just to paint everything. But yeah. Shit be crazy over here at the palace. <laughs> I feel like this vlog has been very raw and emotional, which I think is a pretty accurate depiction of what it's like to renovate an apartment by yourself and do everything for the first time and at the time of editing this vlog i still do not have my electricity fixed like i said i still have this live wire in my wall but having said that i know that i'm going to resolve the problem because that's what we do we resolve problems <laughs> i don't know why i sounded like that but i think that it made me think about a lot of bigger picture things that I just want to have some closing thoughts upon. I was talking to my friend about everything that I've been experiencing as far as feeling disrespected by technicians, feeling like I've been gaslit, and she said some really profound things. It's a very fine line when you're somebody that is positive and you want to give your best to people but also you want to be respected when you show up and you inhabit your femininity oftentimes you're not taken seriously and so we find ourselves dropping our voices an octave i know i do that i'm like hey okay, guys <laughs> you know like take up more space in your chair like women in creative spaces especially we sort of feel like in order to be taken seriously we do have to put on this mask of like being like this boss bitch like this harder version of ourselves in order to be taken seriously but i don't think that i was upset just because there was fire in my walls i think that was a part of it but i think i was really upset because i just i felt helpless in a lot of ways and sort of like you know, I hire somebody, I'm paying them well, and I just want like a job well done. But because of the way I present as like a very femme type, I think that a lot of times I do get treated in a certain way. And so you learn that in order to be taken seriously, you have to like boss up, you have to like put on your bitch mask and <laughs> I don't know if that's a bad thing because it seems like to me when I do that it works out but also it seems out of line with who I am as a person because I am somebody that is like very warm. I, I like to make people feel valued and unfortunately a lot of times people take advantage of that and I don't know. I think that we have to do what we have to do in order to survive in this world. And it's not in ignoring the problem that we're gonna get the results that we want, but I do think that it's important to be aware of the sort of shifts that we have to make in order to survive. And if we find that problematic, which I do, you know, I do find it problematic that like, I was super kind with this person and friendly and then they thought that because of that they could just take advantage of that 
And I won't say that it's in every situation. Like I had somebody come fix my floors today who was really nice. And I just presented as myself, <laughs> crooked glasses and all, and I had a good experience. But I will say that a lot of times I do feel frustrated as a young woman who is eccentric, who's an artist, who's like ambitious, but also presents in a way that is very like imaginative and not like somebody who is carry, you know? So I think the real frustration comes from that is just feeling like I'm trying to do things correctement. <laughs> I'm trying, I just got a text that was really funny. <laughs> I'm trying to do things and put out a frequency that I would like to be reflected back to me. And sometimes when that doesn't happen, it just feels, it just feels very dejecting. I think that it's important as well to share our experience in the moment because I think that in retrospect I can talk about this in a very mature way but also when you're living it in the moment I feel like I'm constantly in a battle between wanting to detach myself from outcomes and not be so like caught up in the final outcome and just trusting that everything's going to be okay but also being a human and having human emotions in that moment. I'm also a Pisces moon. <laughs> She's crazy. <laughs> Basically, Capricorn rising, Pisces moon. Pisces, your moon placement is how you digest your emotions, how you feel your emotions. And Pisces is a very watery sign, very emotional sign. So I think that I am somebody that in the heat of the moment I can become very like emotional and overwhelmed but in retrospect I can digest things in a way that is beneficial to myself but I do think that it's important to record in the moment like feeling frustrated and just sort of the journey of how you get to a place of understanding so I ate like a ton of gummy vitamins today do any of you guys do that? Like you get the vitamins and you're like, I'm going to take two a day. And then they just taste so good that you're like eating a lot. Actually, the pharmacy guy, the pharmacist, because you have to go to the pharmacy to get them. You can't get them at like Walmart or anything like that. You can in the U.S. He's like, oh, you're back again to get your gummies. He's like, two a day. And I'm like, okay. But when midnight hits and you know those gummies are in the placard, when you know that they're in the shelves. You gotta get them. You know, the vitamin C gummies. Are you kidding me? Anyway, I just wanted to sort of talk about that for a second um, and share the wise words of my friend Joan because I think that sometimes there's not always a solution for things, there's just seeing it, you know? Like seeing that this is the way that I've had to learn to move through the world as a female and I think that the only way for me personally to sort of combat that is through my work which is why I'm starting to make like really feminist songs like punk rock feminist songs because like I think it raises awareness in a way that is constructive you know anyway so that is all for this week's episode if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe for videos every tuesday i also have a patreon where you can support what i'm doing and subscribe for more podcast episodes paris meetups as well as i have a line of affirmation journals out and a affirmation workbook journal so if you're interested in that you can check that out also make sure to stream my music if you haven't already my first ep came out in may and i love you guys so much i will see you in the next video and remember you're right on time bye so cruel what your mind
can do for no reason It's so What your mind can do for no reason Thank you to everybody who is watching and who is listening.